Hi, and welcome to this video on Isolated Story, BC's Secret Keeper. Hey, my name is Eric, and um, in this video we're going to take a look at what is known as Isolated Storage. Um, that's a special thing in, it's a new thing in Business Central compared to NAV, and um, it's a way to have secrets and stored away from prying eyes. Um, normally when we have any form of information, we need to store it in the database. Uh, and as soon as something is in the table, it's kind of available for, uh, for other pieces of customization codes, extensions to look at. But isolated stores is different. Um, the name of it is actually not new. Um, it has been part of uh, .NET for long long time um, and in .NET is a way to store data that is specific to a, a a single application in our case isolated storage is specific to a single extension um, and, and I use it we use it a lot in, in our in our apps to store credentials uh, uh, access tokens and all sort of information that is really not should not be available for anybody to see. Um, but let me show you how it works. Um, here I got Visual Studio Code. And I prepared a new extension. Um, and let's create a small app with some credentials set up um, that we want to store. So we'll create a new file, um, create a table. I'll call it ISO setup. Primary key is Usually when we create a one record table, we create a um, a primary key that is just one single field. And then let's create a username field for text 30. Uh, and we'll create a password field, text 30. And I think that's it. That's a pretty good one. Uh, we got the primary key. We have the fields that we need. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, call this setup table here and let's create a, a page for this also. And again, I just use the AL file wizard from um, the ASET AL tools, wonderful uh, extension to Visual Studio Code. I did a video on it, so if you want to see that one, uh, you can find it below. And if you subscribe, you would get a notification of when I'm actually creating videos and stuff. So go subscribe. Um, we'll create a page and the page is on the new table just created. Fast tab, let's create one called login information. Go to next. Go to next. There we go. I want the username and I want the password on that. Perfect. So now we have a table and a page. Uh, one thing that's um, there's a difference between there's, there's a difference in behavior between NAB and uh, Business Central it, when you have pages like this. In in NAB, it, the page will open up and you could enter in it and and it will work. That seems to be broken in Business Central. Uh, so you can you you can have a situation in Business Central where you're typing in something that looks like the record, but it's not. Uh, and to prevent that, there's a simple solution. Um, on, on open page, we simply go, if is empty, then insert. late night typing here in British Columbia. Um, so in this case, there will always be a record and the primary key is blank, which is fine. But, so, so what we can do with our password field here is of course to turn on the extended data type and tell that this one is masked so we'll get the dots. Um, but what we're trying to achieve here is actually not storing the password. Um, so actually, let's go back to the table for a second and say, okay, this field, 
gone. We don't need it. We, we do not want to store our password in the database, in, the, in, a, in a normal table in the field. Um, actually, the storage is still sitting in a database, but it, it's on the side and it's not available through other means than, uh, than this one. So let's instead add a procedure to, um, to the setup table and let's call it password and, and let's the first procedure, let's add one where we can set the password. Um, and in order to use isolated storage, you would could be tempted to do this, isolated, and then because you have seen that there is a code unit called isolated storage management. Great. Uh, so we'll do isolated and then we'll find the function called. You can, you can see that basically isolated storage is what is known as a key value uh, data storage. So, so we have a, a set command. Let me move this up so you can see it. We have a set that had, takes a key and a value and a scope. Um, but let's you know, just continue this for a second. So as soon as I touch this, the type of method set cannot be used for extension development. And that seems strange because I can go through the documentation and see here that, hey, I can set is supported. But here's the very strange thing. We should not use this code unit. Instead, and this is this is strange, but you see there's actually already a something called isolated storage. So there's something that's available right now. Uh, like a magic type uh, inside Business Central. So don't try to use the, the code unit. That will just give you strange errors. It's just there. Isolate storage dot. And now we can now we can actually use the set function. Um, so the set function takes a key. And in this case, let's just call the key password. We can also go go you know fancy keys or uh, like GUIDs and stuff like that. But in reality, it doesn't matter. Um, so I I tend to use keys that are clear text so I can see what the code is supposed to do. And the value we're setting is gonna be our parameter, the PW, and then we need to specify a data scope. And what is the data scope? So the whole idea behind isolated storage is that we want to keep secrets. Um, and we want to make sure that only those who should see the secret, can see the secret. Um, and the first level of this is called module, um, which is kind of a strange name because what is a module? Well, a module is an app, that's the extension, meaning that if I set the data scope to module, then this app, anywhere in this app can read this key. Another app cannot see this key. Uh, the global scope cannot see this key. The only thing that can see this key is the app called module for some reason. Um, what's important here is that module means across all companies. So if I save password at one company, set the password in one company, and have data scope module, I will do a get in another company and get the same. Uh, and that might be right for certain scenarios, it might be wrong for other scenarios. Um, if it's wrong, then you have three other options. One could be that this is related to the user. So depending on who you are as a user, then that's your version. So if, if I do user, then I can save my password, somebody else can save their password. This is still cross companies. Um, the next one is of course called company, meaning that now we store the, uh, the, the secret per company. Uh, 
And the the natural last variant is of course that that you can store company end users. So this is this is my password in this company, but in another company I might have a different password. In this in this case, I'm going to go with company because I'm I'm trying to replace just a password field in a setup with a secret instead. Um, so I will go with company. And you notice that I um, I added a return value here. That's just to make it nice. So I'll actually think, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to use this function. So in case I might need to uh, return it uh, again. So now I have a function where I can set the password. So I also need one where I can just get it. And one cool thing about uh, Business Central and AL compared to, to Nav is that we can, we, we can do overloads. So now I can create another version of this function called password with no parameters. And in this one, I want to get the value. So I go isolated storage dot get. I do password. I need to get it into a, a um, uh, variable here, so I'll just create one of those. Text. Let's make sure that we get the, the tooltips again here. So, get key data scope value. So, next one is data scope. Uh, and since, whoa, data scope. So, if I did this and then PW then I'm storing the password with Datascope company, and then I'm trying to get it with Datascope user. That will not work. Get will fail. Um, as you can see, get returns a Boolean. So if we don't encapsulate this one into a uh, uh, an expression, uh, you get a runtime error. So let's first make sure that we go back and set this to company. Otherwise, I'll pull my hair out later in the video and think what goes on. So we need to say that if we can get it, then let's exit the value. So now we have a what in, in other language we would talk about a getter and a setter. Uh, so we have a password function on the table. Um, what we can do now is go back to the page and say, okay, this one clearly, let's actually let's save this one here. Uh, this won't work anymore because now you can see we're calling a password function. Uh, we can actually, let's, let's try. So just for our Sandy, let's mark this clearly as calling the function. Um, let's compile and see what we get. I need to log in. It's fair enough. Let me clear some more one. And I get something. Let's actually go and, and oh, so see, this one is still strange. So I can put in my initials, but this one is just, you know, just a field. Um, so clearly that's not good enough for us to work with because we need to type in it. And as soon as, as the, um, the expression for the field is a function call, then you cannot enter into it. So, so we need to, to create something more. So we'll, we will add a password variable here and then put this one instead up here. If we run this again, now we can type in it. We can actually type in it while we're not in insert mode. So let's, um, we, we might want to mark this as part of the data set. It doesn't really matter in this case, uh, but let's mark it in the data set so the browser knows that this part is, there's only one record, so we're not switching to the next one anyway. But that still did not make this one non-editable. So what we need to do is control that. Um, and 
we do that with the interval and and so if somebody from Microsoft is actually watching this, what I would love to do was do this because that seems logical. But no, we are not allowed to call a procedure uh, in this case. Uh, sometimes we can do this, but no. So let's create a uh, another global called page edit. And then here set page edit equal cur page dot editable. Um, see how that goes. Spoiler alert, that's not enough. So this one works. Now I click this one, but this one has not picked up on the fact that we're switching. So in order for that to pick up, we might need to go to a trigger called on after get record and do the exact same thing here. Let's see how this goes. In some cases, this will be enough. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so, so far so good. Now we have a field that looks that's on screen and looks and act like a field. So what we need to do now is then fill out our password variable. And it's just equal password. That's the function on our table. Um, let's see how it goes. Well, we can't really see anything because Microsoft is just masking off this one. So let's actually for a second remove this one so we can see what goes on behind Phil. And I get a value. Why do I get a value? I get a value because before I started this video, I was playing around. Uh, and it turns out that I actually still have a value sitting in this thing. So even though I cleared everything off, um, I was just testing some stuff and I actually put something in the uh, in, in, in this one. So let's continue see, okay, apparently this thing works exactly the way we want. Uh, so let's see how do we incorporate this one. So let's go back to the setup page and you all know this is pretty easy. So on validate, uh when somebody types in the password field let's call the the password with the with the, that takes one parameter so this one is the set so i compile and deploy again go to edit testing i hit a five i hit a five interesting so here, here, here is the, the strange thing. Let's do that again. Testing. I exit out of the field. You saw the save thing going on. Let's just hit a five again. If I can, hit a five. And now we have it. So that you, you've seen me in other videos complain about this thing that when is something actually saved and when it's not saved uh, that can be sometimes confusing um, so the only thing we need to do now is turn this one back on and we could just add you know let's add an action here uh, processing action what password caption equal what is my password um application area we always need that trigger on action message password compile i deploy again got the masking back on action what is my password it's called testing I hit edit i type something 
secret in here. Um, and I hit action. What is my password? Secret value. So now we have something that no other apps can, can get. Uh, we have something that, that is hidden away from, you know, all the data integration tools that can, can get data out of any table of no data and all that stuff, it's gone. So, so the only one who can see this value is this app, um, which is pretty nice. Um, and we basically implemented this with two lines of code. Uh, we have the set and the get encapsulated into some more lines of codes, of course, but two important lines of codes. Um, and then we, most of the time in this video was probably spent on actually making the page behave like you would expect a page to behave. Um, and that's it. That's how you can use isolated storage to, uh, to have BC care for your secrets. Um, since this is just a key value storage, you could use it to store tons of other things. Uh, and we do. Uh, we don't tend to use it for many records. Uh, the storage behind the scene is actually a blob field. So it's, it's not really something that you want to have thousands of records in. Uh, but it's very, very easy to work with and very reliable. Um, and as I said at the beginning, we store passwords, we store access token, we store all sorts of things that are secret. Um, yeah, that's how we do it. So if you like videos like this, subscribe to the channel, leave a comments below and, and tell me, me if you, how you keep your secrets in BC. Uh, if you like this, hit like uh, and uh, let me know what you think, if there's anything else you want me to do a video on. Until next time, have a wonderful day.